Hello everyone, my name is Daniel Hasselibot-Shalu. I'm willing to present you a paper titled A Review of Fatigue Damage in Offshore Wind Turbine Structure. First of all, I would like to present the main contents of this presentation. I start with the motivation of main goals and introduction. After that, I describe external and internal forces applied on, on offshore wind turbines. Then I will uh, introduce the environmental parameters that impact on fatty crack growth. In the next step, multi-axial fatty uh, procedure will be explained. And finally, conclusion. We move in an era that the desire for uh, renewable energy use is increasing. Offshore wind turbines have been drawing attention from energy and uh, offshore industries in comparison to those onshore uh, similar structures as uh, the energy generators. For example, according to the International Renewable Energy Agency, many countries, particularly the United Kingdom and Germany, have already provided prominent capacities for this purpose. Apart from main parameters such as marine growth, uh, wind and wave, which challenge the offshore wind turbine design, the depth of water and the size of blades in these structures can be very challenging for this. Regarding the fixed uh, offshore structures like jacket platform, uh, offshore wind turbines have larger uh, structural components compared to those used for the oil or gas industry. Therefore, these structures in the renewable energy industry are subjected to larger loads of uh, waves and wind. Furthermore, uh, the influence of the wind on the blades and the main superstructure results in an increasing moment and in horizontal fundamentally since the speed variation of wind and its direction is sophisticated the fat analysis is complicated as well apart from the wind direction the wake effect of the offshore wind turbine on each other in a wind farm is remarkably important. Consideration of this phenomenon would amend the overall performance of a wind farm. It is noteworthy that uh, every single site has its unique recording of wave and wind histories. Studies recommended that in order to have more accuracy in fatigue lifetime prediction, the environmental data must be available for each site. In some cases, despite data availability, they are not sufficient for all types of offshore projects. For instance, the data of wind speed for the floating structure that is subjected to wind at low height is not suitable for high-rise offshore structures like offshore wind turbines extreme conditions uh, in the ocean environment such as hurricanes must be determined for the project uh, also in extreme weather beating ice sheets with offshore structure can associate with many different frequencies in this structure in fact it depends on uh, the size and the velocity of the uh, ice sheets to prevent the structures against this phenomenon, installing cones, dampers, and a stiffer foundation reduce the probability of the resonance in the offshore structure. However, this is important because it may produce some frequencies close to natural frequencies of the structure, and this phenomenon results in resonance which is devastating for the structure. When it comes to wave analysis, the combination of waves named wave interacting is vital for the 
accurate response of the offshore structure and subsequently fatic life predict. Besides, nonlinear wave analysis would be preferred to linear analysis, one for larger response of offshore to have a sufficient inspection plan during the offshore structure lifetime, characterizing components into two air and seawater is necessary because the nature of seawater can be very crucial and let offshore structures experience marine, gro uh, marine growth. Uh, this phenomenon would increase the diameter of components and as a result, they tolerate larger louds and uh, have larger uh, drag coefficients. The probabilistic models might be uh, very beneficial for the prediction of marine growth. Offshore structures are subjected to a corrosive uh, environment and some factors such as uh, temperature, dissolved uh, oxygen and water velocity can influence corrosion in these structures particularly up to uh, 50 meter depth. In addition, increasing temperature can result in uh, rising corrosion fatigue. Uh, furthermore, the fatigue crack can also accelerate by a stress ratio that is larger than zero. However, it can be very beneficial if the stress ratio is lower than infinity or one. Moreover, uh, corrosion fatigue is time dependent which can accelerate corrosion fatigue by applying high frequency. Now I'm going to explain reasons what uh, may affect fatigue damage in a small scale size. The presence of pitting in material because of the corrosion can be a cause for the beginning of fatigue crack initiation where the plastic deformation under cyclic loadings is happening. It would be divided into two states named fatigue crack initiation and fatigue crack propagation. This process might be continuous as long as the mechanical behavior of the area around the pit is plastic. It can be described by uh, the multi-axial fatigue procedure. It is interesting to say that uh, fatigue crack initiation for those components which have no defects comes from material properties and uh, or uh, accurately mechanical properties in microscale size. For example, the natural damping of material is varied during the fatigue lifetime and it would be divided into three states. In the first stage, dislocation of defects in material causes a slightly rising damping under the cyclic loads. Then it is almost constant in the second stage and after that damping is surging and move into the fracture failure due to uh, energy degradation of material. Another study shows uh, the temperature of the specimen made by aluminum can increase under the two different torsional cyclic loadings. When these studies compare together, it seems that some relations are there uh, among uh, the dislocation of microstructure and energy dissipation of bond structures in material and damping. Besides, some studies uh, indicate that well-established materials with smaller grain sizes can have uh, larger strength and toughness. It can also enhance fatigue life. Hardening is a sufficient factor to explain this issue. If uh, the material has more ductility and hardening, it has a larger fatigue Another thing is ratcheting. Ratcheting itself can impact uh, the material strain 
increasingly for ductile, materi um, a ductile material and decreasingly for uh, brittle ones. In fact, the increase of ratcheting reduces the fatigue lifetime. Many studies have investigated multi-axial fatigue under uniaxial load. However, if an offshore component is surveyed under uniaxial loading, with no doubt it will experience multi-axial loading due to the discontinuity in the element and change of the geometry because of the joints. Therefore, some studies show that the results of the fatigue test does uh, consider uniaxial, multiaxial, uh, proportional and non-proportional loadings bring adequate overall fatigue life estimation. So, we can conclude that the effect of twisting and proportionality and non-proportionality of loadings influence the fatigue life. The study uh, indicates that the multi-axial fatigue energy-based model estimates the multi-axial fatigue life through some criteria such as Fon, uh, Findley, uh, Fatemi and Sosi, uh, minimum circumscribed circle, minimum circumscribed ellipse, and Carpinteri Spanologi and a proposed model which is a combination of two uh, last criteria modify C, uh, S and M, uh, C, E. The effect of proportionality and non-proportionality of loudings on the multi-axial fatigue life is estimated shows that uh, the proposed criteria have the lowest uh, error index and now, uh, Findlay has a higher error index. Several uh, studies emphasize that uh, the in and out phase loadings can even impact fatigue crack initiation and the behavior of crack initiation somehow. Out phase loading can bring adverse effects on fatigue crack growth and decrease the fatigue life uh, time. So, due to the presence of multi-axial stress close to particularly structural joints, notches, and so on, uh, the multi-axial fatigue must be uh, adequately modeled. Uh, multi-axial fatigue can be described by various uh, criteria named uh, strain and stress energy base, mechanics uh, based models, and critical plane. The strain uh, energy-based model gives a proper de description of uh, the cyclic deformation on the repetitive loads, although the critical plane can explain the process of existing and accelerating fatty crack. The complexity of the stress uh, state around the fatty crack tip, where the plastic deformation is taking place, is prominent. In this regard, appropriate simulation is essentially uh, needed. Uh, an assessment of multi-axial fatigue lifetime uh, through the critical plane on pipelines shows that the crack propagation can exist uh, from the fatigue uh, crack interactions. Uh, it means that uh, with two fatigue um, cracks, uh, for example, can accelerate the fatty crack growth on the fat crack tip. As the critical plane is trying to find uh, the fatty parameters such as shear and normal strain and stress, where they are maximized, it can be very useful for the fatty estimation in micro scale size. Another study demonstrates that the multi-axial fatigue life of an offshore material S355 is assessed based on uh, the critical plane under the bioaxial loadings with various criteria including uh, Sandip uh, Kalmeyer Smith model, Fatemi Sosi, uh, Wang Brown, uh, Liu first and Liu second. The figure shows 
the multi-axial fatigue life prediction of a simulation and empirical test. The results based on SKS criteria criterion have more uh, concentration on the diagonal line and bring more accurate results uh, compared to other criteria. Moreover, ev evaluation of uh, the multi-axial fatigue life under uniaxial, biaxial, proportional and non-proportional loadings with criteria such as uh, Smith, uh, Watson top uh, proposed modified generalized strain energy for ductile and breather material are down, although the MGSE criterion is able to give an adequate prediction of fatigue life for both types of material, SWT can bring proper fatigue life prediction for just breather material. In conclusion, for the optimized outline of offshore wind turbines, the accurate simulation of fatigue damage is necessary. SM curve and fracture mechanics usually used for fatigue life prediction and fatigue crack growth respectively. However, since the major time of fatigue life is allocated for a crack initiation, multi-axial fatigue is trying to give better fatigue estimation. That criterion has been drawn attention to is the critical plane in this regard. Although many uh, studies have proposed their assessments, this method has not been as mature as uh, the SN curve and fracture mechanics methods. Therefore, this method needs to be more studied. Many thanks for your attention.